In the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, Amen. Please be seated. It is good to see each of you today on this Lord's Day, and we do give God thanks and praise for your presence. Today we look at the Gospel of Luke. In the Gospel of Luke, the writer begins this passage by saying, Jesus was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. In this verse alone, we discover a few things. First, we discover that Jesus prayed. Second, we discover that the disciples observed that his praying was an important part of his life. And third, we discover that the disciples wanted to learn how to pray as Jesus prayed. They knew that John the baptizer taught his disciples to pray, and they wanted Jesus to do the same. Now, it is clear that the disciples knew about the discipline of prayer. It was and still is an important part of Jewish tradition. But now, they wanted to learn how to pray as Jesus prayed. For they saw something new. They saw something different. And they wanted to experience that new and that different thing. In the verses that follow, we find three important things. The substance of Christian prayer, our need for persistence in prayer, and lastly, God's response to prayer. First, the substance of Christian prayer. The Lord's Prayer is found in Matthew chapter 6 and in Luke chapter 11. Luke says, he said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins. For we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us and do not bring us to the time of trial. The Book of Common Prayer gives us a different translation. It says, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we Forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial. Now, I could spend at least 20 minutes discussing the difference between Matthew, Luke, and the Book of Common Prayer, which I'm sure all of you would appreciate and be very happy that I chose to share those wonderful and insightful details. But I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to say is this. No matter what the translation, we find a recognition of a divine being, a prayer that God's kingdom might come into its fullness, a prayer for forgiveness of sins, and a prayer that we might not fall when tempted. Our prayers should always contain some of these elements if we are to stay the course and to finish the race. Throughout Christian history, prayer has been the key 
to dynamic Christian living. Christians are stronger when they pray. We are stronger when we pray. Churches are more vibrant when they, what? Pray. Now, this does not apply to St. Cyprian's, but as an example, if I am ever the only one praying for this church, then there would be many things that simply could not happen here. Every time you pray, you ought to pray for this church. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. For God is always willing to act on our behalf when we pray. Much has been written and spoken about prayer. James Montgomery, a prolific Scottish poet and hymn writer said, Prayer is the soul's sincere desire, uttered or unexpressed, the motion of a hidden fire that trembles in the breast. Martin Luther, that great Protestant reformer, once said, to be a Christian without prayer is no more possible than to be alive without breathing. Charles Spurgeon, known as the Prince of Preachers in his day, once wrote, true prayer is neither a mere mental exercise nor a vocal performance. It is far deeper than that. It is a spiritual transaction with the creator of heaven and earth. And John Wesley, the father of Methodism, once declared that God does nothing except in response to believing prayer. A few years ago, on our National Day of Prayer, I went to City Hall in Hampton to participate in that service. After the prayers, the readings, and the songs, I was given a rubber prayer band. It was intended to remind me to pray. I am here today to do what that prayer band was intended to remind me to do. I'm here to remind you to pray. I'm here to remind you to pray. I am here to remind you to pray. For if we do not pray, God cannot hear our desires or listen to our cries for help or strength or guidance or healing. This brings me to my next point, our need for persistence in prayer. Here, Jesus, the master teacher and storyteller, tells his disciples a story. It begins as an example. Suppose one of you has a friend. You have an unexpected guest, an old friend. You have nothing to offer him. So you go to a friend who lives nearby at midnight and you ask for three loaves of bread to feed your guest. The friend first says, no, it's late. I'm already in bed and my children are asleep. Go away. Then things suddenly change. Because the man is persistent, the friend who lives nearby will get up and give him anything he needs. The takeaway from this story is that it pays to be persistent. Jesus said we should always pray and never give up. And I say to you, pray and be persistent in your praying 
and then see what, what large doors God will open for you. This brings me to my last point, God's response to prayer. Jesus said, so I say to you, ask and it will be given you. Search and you will find. Knock and the door will be open. For everyone who asks receives and everyone who searches finds. And for everyone who knocks, the door will be open. And he concludes by saying, if you then who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? The translation that we are most familiar with says, ask and it will be given you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open. Ask, seek, knock. Ask, seek, knock. Ask, seek, knock. Here we come to one of the great complexities of the New Testament. Jesus says clearly, ask and it will be given. Seek and you will find, knock and the door will be open. Many of us have taken this teaching to heart and have been disappointed on many occasions. We have asked, we have sought and we have knocked. And what we have wanted has not been granted. One Christian thought has attempted to resolve this disparity between this passage and real life by saying, in answer to prayer, God sometimes says yes. At other times, God says no. And sometimes God says, wait a little longer. I have found an answer in a prayer by St. Chrysostom, where he says at the end, Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us. As I have watched the events of my life unfold, I have been grateful that God said no to some of my prayers. I've also been made very happy when God said yes and the doors flew open, the wind was at my back and the angels guided me to the very desire of my heart. It is the waiting, however, that has always been the most difficult. Nevertheless, if we are to have only those things God wants for us, we must believe that God loves us and knows how to give good gifts to his children. Pray that God might grant your desires and petitions as may be best for you. Pray that God might bless you according to his perfect will for your life. Pray that God might lead you into the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Pray that God might guide you into places of grace and goodness and gladness. Pray, 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 and pray again. And if you must wait, Wait knowing that God is waiting with you for that day when you shall receive all those good things that come from the God who knew us before we were born and shall know us forever and forever and forever and forevermore.
And all the people of God said, Amen. Amen.